Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Chris Lester here, your presenter. I want to thank everybody for taking time out of their busy schedules to listen to what I have to say. You know, a lot going on in the world today in the market. I hope if you know anybody in Ukraine, prayers. Uh, it's, uh, you know, unprecedented times, unprovoked attacks. You know, I, I typically tend to stay away from politics and religion as topics, but this is one I think we can all agree upon that the world needs our prayers and hopefully this gets resolved shortly. But I was talking to some folks today that I didn't think that just by my experience and getting to know them, that they knew anybody in Ukraine, but they actually had family there. So it is a little scary. And, you know, I reflect on that. And, you know, you see here and you think one day how fortunate we are to live in this country and anywhere where, where you're sitting back and you're trying to build a, a life and you have family. And next thing you know, you're being invaded. So it's really, really scary. So please, prayers go out to them. This weekly topic is a little bit of an extension from last week, right? So last week we talked about the annuity that Allianz put out there, the 35% bonus. It is a unique product, but it's not for everybody, right? Depends on your age, depends on how quickly you might need funds. It is a very attractive bonus, but there are other alternatives, right? Maybe something that doesn't require us to wait as long to turn on income or something that we're going to talk about here today, which are structured notes. You know, at the end of the day, vehicles, financial vehicles are tools. And one of the things I absolutely stress is that, you know, a tool, when it does what it was designed to do, is exactly that. You know, a screwdriver, when it's turning a screw, that's what it was intended to do. You can't say that, oh, well, that was horrible because I needed it to saw a piece of wood and it didn't work. That's why I'm very, you know, when I hear marketing messages that I hate annuities and you should too. It really is like saying I hate a screwdriver and you should too, right? It really just depends on what the tool was designed for. And then is that tool appropriate for the overall project that we're trying to, to work on? So without further ado, we're going to take us through structured notes, something on structured notes. I'm investment registered advisor through Brookstone, who is an RIA, which stands for a registered investment advisory firm. And part of the philosophy that we promote is first, we want to have a strategy. Overall, where are we trying to get to? What's our core investment philosophy? And, and quite traditionally, that may be a balance of cash to equities. And in the past, a lot of things might have led towards from a safety component, bonds. Well, you know, I have ad nauseum had concerns about bonds uh, as part of our portfolios, whether you work with me or not. Bonds do not like rising interest rates. And so we need to start to think about alternatives for that safe money, that place where we can put things and just take less risk to the equities, right? And that's what we're going to talk about here today. Structured notes, what are they? Well, they're a financial product with predetermined returns and slash terms. And then you're, they're linked to an underlying asset. We'll use indices. And they're structured by large institutions that hedge out their own risk. So that's all legalese, typically written by attorneys for presentation purposes. So what's that mean in plain English? Well, the way that I like to explain it is, you know, structured notes are sort of Wall Street's or the bank's version of fixed index annuities, right? Remember, annuities are one of the only financial products on the planet that can give us guaranteed income for life, regardless of how long you live. But the problem with the marketplace right now and banks right now is typically if we have some money, idle cash sitting around, if we look for some type of return, you might, might get 1% at your local bank in a CD. So what was created by the financial institution are structured notes. And I can tell you that there can be thousands of combinations of terms to create a desirable structured note. So hence the term. 
So here's, you know, a sample. The issuer is a big bank. We'll look at what some of them are. And then the term, the notes that we at Brookstone offers, and they're one of the largest purchaser of these notes from these financial institutions, we're typically looking at 12-month notes. They can go longer, 18 months, and then they have an underlying yield. These notes have been averaging since they've started doing these, I think, five, six years ago. Net of fees, seven and a half percent, right? But there's some underlying components that you have to be aware of. They're linked to indices. In this example, they only link to two, the S&P, which is large cap index. Most of us, when you look at the marketplace, you say, oh, the S&P is up, the S&P is down. Well, that's what it's linked to. And then the other index in this example is a Russell 2000, so small caps. So it's taken large caps and small caps, and then it says, hey, listen, from a point in time to another point in time, if it breaks or goes below a trigger, a barrier level, protection is taken off. And then they all notes uh, that are negotiated have a call feature. And what that means, um, some, some of you may be familiar with bonds, bonds can be called. Let me explain that and maybe with a little bit of pictures, but here are some of the lenders that, that uh, Brookstone has been working with, you know, JP Morgan, Barclays, Goldman Sachs, uh, Citibank, um, you know, uh, Bank of Montreal. Uh, these are all terms or notes that we've seen over the last year. So here's a note from last February. I think this note went off at, uh, yeah, 10.65% annualized. And you think, oh, 10.65, I mean, that's incredible. How are they able to do that? So what's happening is they're sold in $1,000 increments. And they, the three indices, not two, but three are the S&P, the Russell 2000, and the NASDAQ. If any one of these indices breach 30%, any one of them. So you see over here to the right, the market's up 40, up 30, up 20, up 10, zero. You get a 100% of return of your principal. If it goes down, any one of these indices are down 10, down 20, down 30, 100% of your principal. It's only with a breach, meaning that let's just say the NASDAQ just ends up, Elon Musk decide, just found out that all the batteries and all the electric cars across the world are defective, right? The NASDAQ is going to tank. Well, if it breaches 690, then it's marked to the market with the American style. And what does that mean? It means at the end of the point in time, so today is the third. So if the notes for March go off on March 3rd, March 3rd of 2023, if there was a breach during the year, protection is off. So let's just say in May, but during the course of that year, the markets recovered, they fixed it, found out it was actually uh, not true and the market recovered. So maybe it didn't get back to even, maybe it got close. So you're still getting your coupon payments of 10.65%, get deposited into your account every month. And then at the end of that period, uh, wherever the value is, you would get whatever the underlying value and they are going to. So let's say it was the S&P, the Russell 2000 and the NASDAQ were the three indices. And it was the NASDAQ that set off the trigger, the protection taken off, but it recovered. The Russell recovered, but the S&P, because of Russia invading Ukraine, you know, dropped. And let's say that that was lower than the other two indices. It's only going to move to whichever the lowest indices is. So I don't know if that was clear, but, you know, as we go through this a little bit, hopefully that'll shed some light on it. Now, that was American style, and that was a mouthful. Europeans just noticed 10.65% for for last February, but for European, notice it's a lower interest rate. And why? Because it's less risk. What that is, is purely the same protection, same indices, but they only mark two points in time, February 12th to February 12th. If on the date that these notes are come due on February 12th, if there is not one of these indices are not down 30%, then your coupon would have paid during the course of the year, the eight and a half percent and the return of principal uh, comes back. Now these are guaranteed by the credit worthiness of the banks that I showed you before. They're not FDIC insured, they're not SIPC insured, 
but they are, you know, Wells Fargo writes a note. It's based on the credit worthiness. And we're just going to some of the big banks that offer these. So just to add a little clarity. The reason I wanted to talk about this is because a lot of us on the call, we have 401ks at work. You know, maybe you want to take some risk off the, off the table. You want to try and, and, and do something. Well, that's where we can help. If you want to see what it would look like, you know, we would set up an account at TD Ameritrade. We would uh, hopefully your 401k allows something called an in-service distribution. If you're over age 59 and a half, you can absolutely do that. But if you're not, then it's really subject to the plan rules. So you may or may not be allowed to do it. And that remains to be seen. But if it is something and you want to de-risk your portfolio, you want to say, hey, listen, having something like this might make sense. Now, typically what I do with clients is I don't go all in to one month's note. It takes time to get into these. The example is, and not everybody has this amount of money, but I just use it to keep the math simple. Let's say that you have a million dollars in your IRA. You got $400,000 is 40% in bonds and the other 60% is in equities. The 40%, right? I would not take somebody's million dollars and dump it into the market today. I just don't do that. We typically will dollar cost average in over a period of time. The amount that is allocated towards structured notes, typically I take a 10 month period and I dollar cost average in over 10 months. So if you had 400,000 notes are gonna, you're every month, 40,000 is gonna roll into whatever the negotiated terms are for that month. So that's how we've been structuring them. They work. Now, the only thing I will uh, touch on, because let's talk about liquidity, right? If somebody says to me, Chris, I need this money in a year. Well, then maybe a one-year note might make sense. But if you say, hey, listen, I'm buying uh, uh, my second home in six months, I'm probably not going to recommend structured notes for you because we need that liquidity because TD Ameritrade, you turn around in my example, we put 40,000, but they might only show 38,000 as the account value during the current period. And the reason is, is because they have to assume that somebody says, I want to sell my note today and to go out to the marketplace and get a buyer. Now, the last thing that I touched on was something called a callable feature. You see here on line 12, where it says 12 months, no call for six months. So what happens is in last year, not these notes in Mar uh, in February, but in March, Goldman Sachs offered, uh, we were able to negotiate 13.65% note. But six months into it, in August, they called the note. It was a, a uh, auto call. They just, everybody, and it's just because the market was less volatile then. So they basically said, hey, listen, you got a good deal for six months. And they turned around and they said, here's your principal back. You got six months of principal, but whatever happened in August in terms where, and I think at that point in time, we'll see in the next slide what they were, but you know, banks are not in the habit of giving away more money than they need to. So there's different types of notes, right? Growth notes, income notes. Uh, we're, we're talking about what we call flash notes that generate a coupon and we call them income notes, right? So this is just some of the yields for 2021. When I did these slides last year, they were pretty similar. But you can see this was the March that I was, uh, that I was talking about, Goldman Sachs, 13.15%. This note got called and then six months, one, two, three, four, five, six. So right around September, this is what the marketplace, still 9%, but it was interesting when people got their notes called and they were like, I was getting 13. What do you mean I'm only getting nine? I mean, that's just what, what the market, you know, what the offerings were. Now, with all the volatility of late, we're up, uh, I think the uh, March notes just um, last month went off at 13.65. This month for March are at, for the American style, are going off at 12.9. I mean, listen, it, it's just an idea to be able to, and it, you're not betting the farm onto it. You, you can do, you know, like I said, they're done in thousand dollar increments. You could do two notes, three notes, and do that every month. It's just a way to start to build some type of income stream back into your portfolio. If you need these for income, you can absolutely take the coupon and live off that, right? So like I said, you know, they're, since inception, they've been averaging net of fees of seven and a half percent, but these have been above average for now. And I think the last I checked, in the last six years, they've only had 
six notes where there's been a breach. And that's one of the reasons why there's that 30% threshold that there's only been six notes that I think have actually where a trigger went off and none of them lost money, even including COVID, right? So, you know, it's because the coupon that came keeps coming back, the market recovered, all these things that people actually, you know, they maybe they didn't uh, get the full total return, but they did, they didn't lose their money and they got the coupon as well. So, you know, it's just an idea. And then this just talks about income versus high yield bond markets. And the blue, the blue is the income note yield versus if you were in junk bonds, right? They just have not been paying well. So it's just another way to add something, another strategy to your portfolio. And like I said, I wanted to spend some time going over that. These are the final terms for our January last year. Morgan Stanley, the 10.7. And these are, I mean, they're all have, these are registered securities. They all get QCIP numbers, right? There you go. So there's nothing shady or alternative here, but you know, the, the, the biggest thing that I talk about is what are the trigger values? What could happen? This is on the date, the initial value of the index 3795.54, right? During the year, could an American note could it go down 30%? Any one of these indexes? The answer is yes, it could. If it does, protection is off. And whichever one of these is the lowest is the one that is going to determine the final value of the overall return of principal. In the meantime, you're going to get 10.7% interest divided by 12 months added to the account every month. So again, it's, it's been something a lot of my clients have been able to uh, participate in and enjoy. I lastly wanted to say, hey, there's no call for the next two Thursdays. I am traveling, my partners uh, and I, so I will be away. So next Thursday, no call. The following Thursday, no call. I'm happy to, to talk or answer or help anybody. If you have questions, you want to do something, send me an email. Let me know. These are all the disclosures. Uh, just make sure that you know I'm in compliance. And here's my contact information. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Happy to help any way that we can. And again, stay safe out there. Say a prayer for uh, Ukraine. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.